Um, hello again, and this is part three of session three on the uh, short story element of love. In this part of the session, we're going to talk about a letter from Gaza, a short story written by uh, Ghassan Kanifani. Um, typical of the unit, we're going to highlight the uh, plot, and we're going to also talk about other uh, plot-relevant uh, issues. Uh, before I uh, get started uh, with the uh, short st story itself, I would like to uh, share with you an outline uh, as how I intend to uh, cover uh, this part of the session. Uh, we'll uh, be uh, starting with uh, some kind of introduction about Ghassan uh, Kanafani, the writer, uh, the scholar, and also the uh, uh, political activist. And then we're going to move on to talk about the plot of uh, a letter from Gaza. I'm, go I'm going to tell you uh, what the story uh, I mean, uh, is about. And out of our uh, or uh, out of my narrative, uh, lots of ideas and issues are going to uh, uh, to be uh, like raised and brought up. And we'll talk about them. Uh, we're going to be always uh, setting uh, that short story uh, and that plot uh, of this short story against the uh, the, uh, the short the other uh, short stories and the other plots of the other uh, short stories. Uh, after that, we're going to move on uh, to talk about the uh, conflict or conflicts that this short story uh, contains. Uh, and after that, we're going to talk about other uh, I mean, issues and uh, themes uh, I mean, uh, spawning out of the uh, discussions. Uh, and this is going to be followed by uh, highlighting the uh, color uh, I mean, uh, symbolism. Obviously, the short story is replete with the symbolism especially uh, color symbolism. We're going to talk about the uh, different colors that are uh, there in the short story and we're going to highlight their uh, significance and why they are there and what, what they mean and uh, stuff like that. Uh, we're going to conclude the uh, discussions with um, some, uh, some kind of uh, I mean, talk about the uh, characters, especially the uh, character uh, of Nadia, the 13-year-old uh, girl who um, had like um, who had to sacrifice uh, her limbs for the uh, um, like we're going to see uh, for uh, for um, for Palestine and for the uh, liberation of Palestine when the uh, I mean the Israelis uh, bombarded uh, Gaza. We're going to s uh, we're going to look at the uh, significance of uh, this kind of sacrifice and how. Um, 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 it became a turning point for the other characters, especially for the narrator and, uh, and his friend Mustafa in California. We're going to see uh, that um, um, and other uh, issues. Uh, let me uh, start with Ghassan Kanafani, the author of the short story. Uh, Ghassan Kanafani uh, is um, a lot of things, as a matter of fact. Uh, he is a Palestinian short story writer and novelist, and he is also um, a literary uh, critic and scholar, and um, I would say above all else he is uh, a political uh, activist. Uh, he lived uh, bet between 1936 um, um, uh, uh, and, um, and 1972. Uh, he was assassinated uh, in 1972 in Beirut, uh, there was uh, this, uh, the, there was like a car bomb and he was in the car and he uh, got killed uh, along with his uh, niece Lamis. This is of course tragic. If you come to know that Hassan Kanafani, uh, 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 apart from his political activism, was a prolific, uh, I mean, short story uh, writer, um, and um, a scholar. Um, um, let me um, talk about, um, uh, like I told you, he wrote um, so many uh, uh, I mean, like short stories and novels, and he uh, is also uh, credited uh, with the idea of uh, 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 bringing to prominence uh, some of the now established uh, Palestinian uh, literary figures like Samih al Qasim and Mahmoud Darwish. Had it not been for, for him, they wouldn't have been 
that popular and that famous. Uh, he wrote um, an, an interesting and a seminal uh, book, uh, which is called the, um, or which was titled the, um, uh, I mean the Palestinian literature, literature under occupation, 1948-1968. Um, uh, uh, and uh, in this uh, book, he uh, uh, spoke, or he, un uh, I mean introduced to the Arab world and, uh, and, uh, and to the world in general, uh, um, I mean, uh, Palestinian writers uh, um, uh, under occupation, I mean, uh, he introduced them and uh, we, uh, by virtue of this introduction, we, uh, we now uh, know uh, a lot of them. Um, what else about him? Like I told you, uh, we cannot separate his political activism uh, from his um, uh, literary uh, uh, careers as, um, as a writer and as um, um, a critic. Because this is actually what he said. He said, uh, had it not been for the fact that I was uh, or, uh, a novelist, I, would, I wouldn't have engaged in politics. Of course, his major uh, preoccupation and concern is the liberation of Palestine. Uh, he uh, was um, an, um, an exile for uh, most of his life. He was uh, born in Yaffa, uh, which is now in, uh, uh, which is now occupied, of course, and. Um, he had this sense uh, of not belonging anywhere. He had to, uh, he of course, and his family and lots of other Palestinian families uh, were dislocated and dispossessed. They had to flee uh, their, their, their country and their homeland in 1948. Uh, he had to travel first to uh, Lebanon and then he went to um, Syria, Damascus, where he uh, um, took up, uh, after he of course finished uh, high school, he took up uh, teaching as a career and then he um, uh, went uh, to uh, Kuwait and stayed there as a teacher for some time and he finally settled uh, in uh, Beirut uh, where he got killed like I told you. Uh, if you if you look at that, I mean, he uh, obviously he didn't mean to travel uh, and relocate. Uh, I mean, uh, every number of months or years because uh, he uh, he traveled and uh, and relocated because of uh, under the um, uh, under the pressure of not belonging you know, the fact that he didn't even have. Uh, um, uh, documentations that uh, that link him to one place. Um, of course, we're familiar with the fact that uh, I mean, Palestinians um, uh, um, up until this moment, when they uh, travel, uh, they didn't. They didn't. At one point, they didn't have like um, uh, passports like uh, all other human beings. They have like uh, um, um, I don't know what kind. Of, it's, a, it's a book where there. I mean, details. Are, I mean, of them uh, are written, and these are uh, they don't uh, this this uh, these books wouldn't amount to uh, passports. That's it. So it wasn't easy for them to travel, uh, even within uh, the Arab uh, world. And this is, of course, very uh, unfortunate and very uh, sad. Uh, he brings all these uh, uh, feelings of disposition and dislocation. Uh, uh, and alienation, um, and of course disappointment, uh, with, um, uh, and disappointment to uh, his um, uh, narratives. I mean, uh, his uh, his novels and short stories um, are entirely uh, about uh, the Palestinian cause, the uh, Palestinian peasants, um, how they uh, used to live. Uh, he talks a lot about. Um, um, what it feels like to be dispossessed and dislocated. Um, uh, what else about Hassan Kanafani? And of course, uh, he was a Marxist, 
um, and um, he believed that um, a solution for the uh, Palestinian cause um, shouldn't be um, uh, like um, uh, it uh, wouldn't be a, a, a national uh, I mean, solution uh, confined and restricted to the uh, Palestinians. It, it is uh, uh, it should be uh, an Arab one. Uh, he believes that he was a pan Arabist who uh, uh, believed that um, uh, when uh, the Arabs uh, get together, they they they. There, uh, there can be a solution for the Palestinian cause. He was, uh, like I told you, um, uh, he was uh, a Marxist um, uh, who uh, also believed at one point that um, for the uh, Palestinian cause to uh, to find a solution, there has to be also uh, uh, like um, Arab. Uh, social uh, revolutions uh, in the different Arab world and he, uh, I think uh, with what we are seeing nowadays I think he, is, uh, he, he proved to be very prophetic uh, um, he believed that this is this is only uh, this uh, uh, I mean Arab social revolutions would be the first step uh, towards uh, the uh, finding a solution uh, to the Palestinian because eventually uh, having uh, the freedom of Palestine. Uh, uh, Palestine. Um, uh, this is uh, basically about uh, Sank and Fanny. Um, let me uh, move on to the short story itself. The short story is full of human battles. It's very um, engaging. It's full of uh, human uh, emotions and compassion and a lot of uh, stuff like that. Um, let me uh, first of all, um, I mean the plot is very simple, the, it takes uh, the uh, short story takes the uh, form or the shape of a uh, personal letter uh, sent by the narrator uh, of the short story to um, uh, uh, one of his friends, Mustafa, in uh, California and obviously there was this, was, this letter was uh, some kind of uh, reply to an earlier uh, letter uh, sent by Mustafa, um, the one who lives in California, to the narrator, inviting him over to go and, uh, and live in California uh, with him. Um, uh, the uh, letter, um, like I told you, the whole short story is, uh, is a letter. Uh, the short story starts with the um, with the um, the idea that uh, the narrator is uh, sending uh, Mustafa um, uh, back, uh, telling him that he has made up his mind and he is not um, he wouldn't leave uh, Gaza behind and travel uh, to uh, California because this is uh, this would be escapist. On, on his part. Uh, um, the whole short story is also set in some kind of flashback. Okay, so we have uh, the, uh, the letter starts with the uh, resolution that uh, the narrator uh, came out with, I mean the idea of staying uh, and not traveling uh, to uh, uh, California. And then after that we have this, I mean, flashback where uh, the narrator is sharing memories uh, uh, with us um, about um, what kind of life he, he used to uh, have uh, before, uh, uh, before uh, he met, before he uh, paid uh, a visit to, uh, to, uh, to his uh, niece Nadia in hospital. Obviously uh, the visit of uh, of the narrator to his um, niece Nadia uh, Marx uh, is very important, okay? So, uh, um, I mean, lots of things um, uh, are, um, uh, I mean, the, the, the visit uh, in itself marks the beginning of the, the huge uh, transformation 
uh, and the huge change of heart that we're going to uh, notice in the narrator. Um, you need to think of the narrator before he went to the hospital to uh, see his uh, niece and after uh, he walks uh, out of the hospital. Um, um, a lot of things uh, are going to change. Uh, before that, Gaza uh, was um, something, and the people of Gaza, of course, and after that, they, uh, it became a, a totally uh, different thing. Uh, we'll, we'll highlight this part when we, when we uh, talk about the issues uh, uh, and the topics that the short story uh, uh, has. So again, um, uh, a personal letter sent by the narrator to his friend um, declining his offer and his invitation to go over and leave, uh, and live in uh, California. Um, um, like I told you, um, uh, his I mean the letter uh, starts with the resolution, the fact that he, um, the narrator made up his mind and he is uh, resolute about not traveling to uh, California and then he starts uh, or he engages in uh, f a flashback um, and, uh, and then you have this um, idea of uh, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, as if uh, the Hassan the Kanafani is having like a camera and we have different uh, shots uh, put together in the letter we have uh, sometimes we are in Gaza and then uh, after that at one point we are in uh, Cairo airport where uh, the narrator is seeing his friend off uh, to, uh, uh, before, he, uh, before his friend travels to uh, uh, California and then after uh, that we have uh, snap shots about um, the narrator uh, living in, in Kuwait in um, uh, oppressive uh, loneliness, like he said, living like an oyster, isolated and feeling lonely, uh, thinking uh, that there is no uh, future, a uh, bright future ahead. Um, okay, so um, these are the, um, I mean, the different shots that we have, and then comes like uh, I told, I told you, uh, the meeting that uh, the narrator. Uh, has or had with his uh, niece uh, in hospital and when he uh, gets to know that she um, one of her uh, legs uh, got uh, amputated um, um, and then he uh, gets to know the reasons why uh, uh, this this happened uh, he his life um, dramatically uh, uh, and radically changes the fact that uh, his uh, loneliness, his oppressive loneliness and his lack of uh, vision and clarity uh, give way to uh, resolution and, uh, um, um, and, the, uh, and sacrifice on his part, the fact that he, he, uh, he uh, eventually intends to sacrifice the um, uh, the money and the um, uh, beautiful faces and water and the green, uh, greenery in uh, uh, California that he was promised and he decides to, uh, to stay in uh, Gaza. This is of course a big sac sacrifice given the fact that Gaza was under uh, bombardment, Gaza was uh, poverty stricken, Gaza is um, you know, um, it was, it was, um, Gaza is not, uh, at, the, at the time, is not the, the, the best of all possible places for, for him to uh, decide to leave, uh, um, uh, not to leave uh, Gaza behind and fly uh, or flee uh, to uh, California was no mean feat. It was something big. And it, it all happened because, like I told you, because or, or due to the meeting that he had with his niece, like we're going to see. Um, uh, as you see, um, um, and where 
the, uh, the, the plot is concerned, um, it's a personal letter like where I told you, uh, you also have this um, the um, technique of uh, flashback uh, featuring very uh, prominently in this uh, short story. Uh, most of the events are in the past as some kind of uh, remembrance and this is by the way this is also very realistic we um, um, we we have this tendency to um, to engage in, 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 in memory and in, in, um, a remembrance about the uh, I mean the, uh, I mean whether they are the happy old days or tragic uh, I mean uh, and sad events in our lives uh, okay so this is as far as the plot uh, is uh, concerned. Um, like I told you, um, uh, we uh, uh, let's now talk about the uh, conflict or um, uh, conflicts uh, that we have. Uh, obviously, we have uh, a number of uh, conflicts in this short story. We um, the uh, uh, biggest. Uh, um, an external conflict uh, would, uh, uh, of course, remain the conflict between the uh, people of Gaza, people who live uh, in Gaza under occupation, and the occupying forces. Okay, uh, and this is, by, by the way, um, I think it's an archetypal conflict where you you always have this scenario: you have a peaceful people living on uh, a certain uh, piece of land and then you have occupying forces coming over to claim uh, this land at their own um, I mean claiming that they they they, uh, they, they are here to like uh, uh, for the uh, in the uh, for for the uh, goodness of the um, natives or the inhabitants of this uh, land. Uh, we have seen that in, in the, so many uh, literary discourses that we have uh, met, and there's so many, um, we have it, if you, if you, if you think of this uh, uh, in terms of, um, if you think of this, um, and this happened even in the United States when the uh, the white Europeans uh, first went to the uh, Western Hemisphere and they started to, under the, um, uh, I mean, their uh, um, um, motos and slogans of um, white uh, man's burden and the manifest destiny, they, uh, uh, they, um, they started to like um, dispossess and dislocate the um, European, I uh, mean the Native Americans. Um, okay, so you um, again, uh, this is the conflict that that I am describing as archetypal. It's, it, it has always been in, in, in the history, and it is it has always been uh, in uh, in literary works because, like uh, I'm sure you know that. Uh, literature is a reflection, uh, can be a reflection of reality, it can be a social and um, a historical uh, document. So you have this uh, struggle um, and conflict between the, um, the people of Gaza, the peaceful uh, people of Gaza, and you have the occupying forces. Uh, you also have the uh, conflict uh, between the, uh, um, this is also an ex external conflict, uh, the conflict between the, the world of children and the world of uh, adults. The world uh, of children is represented by Nadia, the 13-year-old uh, girl, who for, uh, obviously for no apparent reasons, um, at least for for her, this is um, uh, yeah, you know she's a child and she doesn't know much about the world and what is happening and even words like occup occupation and having uh, a country uh, like occupant buying another country. She uh, this is this uh, um, until this stage I think this would be beyond uh, her hair. I mean given the fact that she was very uh, uh, 
very small and very uh, in terms of age, of course. Uh, so you have this um, conflict between the world of children, innocent children, like Nadia, and the world of uh, adults. Uh, I mean, um, and uh, we would put uh, uh, in this side, we would put, uh, um, I mean, her adult uh, family members, we would put the um, the occupying forces, uh, okay, um, and uh, and you have these two different uh, world views. The world view of a child who is um, a tabula rasa, as it were, a white sheet of paper. His life is full of um, innocent endeavors, and you have the scheming nature of uh, um, I mean, occupying uh, adult. Uh, of uh, occupying forces uh, who are bent on uh, destruction, on, 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 on occupying and settlements and stuff like that. Um, you also have the um, external conflict uh, between uh, Gaza and what uh, uh, Gaza stands for and uh, California. Um, and this can 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 be uh, shown and highlighted if you um, if you come to think of the uh, Gaza uh, as described in this short story. Uh, this, of course, before uh, uh, the uh, metaphors or the change that has happened to the narrator. Before uh, before the change. Raza stood for everything, uh, I mean, dismal and bad and sad, uh, okay? Uh, of course, after, uh, after that it's going to be different, but uh, obviously uh, Raza is under occupation and her, I mean, its uh, conditions and circumstances are uh, far from happy. And then you said Gaza against California, where... Um, I mean, uh, um, there is uh, everything is uh, I mean, green over there. It's uh, green and watery, and you have um, uh, beautiful faces in the description of the uh, narrator in his uh, letter. So you have this comparison between um, uh, a war zone, Gaza, and uh, uh, a place or a city, I mean, I mean California, or a state of course, California, where um, I mean the idea of war is um, no longer uh, there. I mean, it's, uh, people are went beyond this stage and now are um, uh, making cars and um, uh, going to the moon and um, having big universities. And I mean, so you're talking about prosperity in the full sense of the word. So this uh, juxtaposing uh, between uh, Gaza and California uh, is also meant to, uh, to show you how uh, sad and tragic the situation is in Gaza. Um, um, what else? We have uh, the internal conflict within the uh, mind and soul of the narrator. Uh, the internal conflict um, is um, very clear and, to, and obviously it took some time um, um, and it took him some time to come to the uh, conclusion and the decision not to, uh, to uh, like, um, um, to resist the temptation to travel over to California and, and flee uh, Gaza with all its um, uh, uh, obscure uh, ties to uh, family and house uh, and land. Uh, obviously, he, uh, the narrator has this conflict whether to stay um, in Gaza, poor, uh, having f very limited access to, um, to everything in life. Uh, at one point, the narrator says that uh, for children to um, to be happy, or for uh, any um, uh, um, inhabitant of, of Gaza, uh, Gaza 
uh, happiness is a luxury and is a deviation, a social deviation, because it's not something that they are used to. Uh, so to uh, so to have to 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 have this um, um, idea of having to choose between Gaza with uh, with its dismal realities and compartments and California, uh, um, where he is going to have a good position. He, uh, he got accepted in the um, Department of Engineering uh, in one of the universities. Um, money uh, and wealth uh, are awaiting uh, him, um, um, I mean greenery, obviously people there are carefree and um, they don't have the um, trials and the uh, tribulations that the uh, people of Gaza are experiencing and have. So this is the internal conflict and of course um, we get to know that he um, he made, I mean, the narrator made up his mind and decided to, uh, to stay uh, and leave um, and forget about the, um, I, mean, um, I mean, he decided to, uh, to live uh, for, for the people of Gaza, to, to fight uh, with them and to feel their suffering and uh, to be one of them, not to travel. And he even invited his uh, friend and, um, Mustafa to uh, go back and live with them in Gaza um, irrespective of the misery and the suffering uh, that they are experiencing. Uh, these are the different kinds of conflicts that we have uh, in this uh, short story. Uh, what else about this short story that I would like to highlight? Um, I would like to highlight. Um, yeah, let's let's talk about. Um, um, so, if we're going to use, um, or if we're going to apply the uh, different uh, stages uh, of the traditional plot to this um, short story. Um, I'm not going to talk about everything. I'm just I'm, I'm going to highlight the um, the um, the visit uh, that the narrator um, paid or made uh, to uh, his um, niece uh, Nadia uh, in hospital, and um, uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about this part uh, as the uh, as corresponding to the. Uh, Climb, the stage of uh, the climax in any traditional uh, uh, plot or short story. Uh, this, is, um, this is the turning po point in the full sense of the word because uh, for the, uh, the narrator, um, Gaza was something uh, and it became a totally different thing after he had uh, or he has made uh, this visit to his. Uh, uh, to his niece, I would like to highlight how important this stage of the uh, of the plot is. It's uh, it's very um, transformational. It changed the uh, perspectives and the views of the, and the world view of the uh, narrator um, uh, altogether. Um, I would like to tell you what Gaza was like uh, in his uh, own. Uh, assessment and what uh, it became after he met uh, his niece and of course um, uh, you're going to appreciate um, what niece uh, what his niece has uh, has done I mean in terms of the uh, sacrifice that she has offered the fact that she had to um, we are told that uh, at one point during the uh, bombardment of Gaza by the Israeli uh, occupation uh, she, um, in, an, in, an, in, in an act of sacrifice, uh, and very bravely, she had to like uh, throw her body o uh, on top of her uh, uh, brothers and sisters in order to protect them from one of the uh, bomb shells, obviously, um, and she uh, and, and they had to like uh, amputate her uh, her leg uh, uh, for that. Uh, this uh, act of sacrifice uh, 
uh, you're going to appreciate it more when you uh, get to know how transformed and reformed and changed uh, the narrator uh, is uh, after he, uh, he visited her. So like I told you, the visit marks the big change, the big turning point that we have in this short story. Let me um, share with you some of the, um, some of the feelings that the, the narrator uh, has for Gaza before, before he paid the visit and the feelings that he uh, had for Gaza uh, after the, um, the visit. Um, uh, for, uh, let me, uh, if you go all the way to pages like um, 77, in, in one, in one um, uh, um, he's saying, why don't we abandon this Gaza and flee? This, uh, remember, we're talking about, this is a flashback, and he's talking about Gaza. Uh, before he met his niece and uh, got to know, uh, get to know about the sacrifice that she has uh, offered. Uh, uh, he's uh, addressing or uh, writing to his uh, friend uh, saying, why don't we abandon this gas and flee, okay? So uh, flee and flying away from the, uh, the, the here and now of Gaza with its misery and suffering and everything, okay? Uh, 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 and this Gaza, we're going to meet this phrase uh, um, uh, three or four times. This Gaza, this Gaza, this Gaza, and this Gaza, which is, um, uh, if anything, it is a reference to uh, how he, uh, he used to belittle Gaza. According to him, Gaza, uh, I mean, it doesn't give him, um, I mean, now, Gaza for him is not is not a beautiful place. It's full of uh, misery and stuff. Um, and then, if you move uh, all uh, the way, um, I'm, I'm, I am um, just um, uh, giving you examples of how uh, Gaza used to mean to him before the visit and uh, after that we're going to move to the transformation uh, that uh, he has experienced uh, um, uh, and uh, how changed um, his assessment is of Gaza. And then uh, he, uh, he refers to Gaza as um, I found Gaza just as, and this is page 78 by the way, I found Gaza just as I had known it, closed like the introverted uh, uh, a lining of a rusted snail shell, see, thrown up by the waves on the sticky sand shore by the slaughtered house. This Gaza, again this Gaza, which is um, very um, demeaning of Gaza, this Gaza was more cramped than the mind of a sleeper in the throes of a fearful nightmare. Um, and then, you, uh, he, uh, we have scattered references to Gaza as an amputated town at one point, as uh, painted um, in uh, grey and of course um, by a sick man or a sick man and you know of course um, grey is, um, um, uh, is not uh, a very uh, comf uh, yeah. um, it's not white uh, to, to say the, uh, the least. Uh, it's not, uh, so grey is the, uh, the color of ashes and can also be um, uh, indicating, uh, I mean, decay and old life. So this, this was Gaza for him. Um, uh, he's always uh, referring to uh, Gaza uh, and approximating it with defeat uh, 
and debris and destruction. Um, uh, he's always referring to Gaza, um, to the son of Gaza as uh, um, uh, blazing, blazing sun filled the streets with the color of blood, the color of blood. It's, it's a dismal situation in Gaza where obviously um, uh, what do you expect of a country or a city under occupation? Of course, blood and destruction. Uh, so what I'm trying to um, to uh, prove here, uh, at one point he was describing the uh, streets of Gaza as being uh, very narrow. And so. This is Gaza for the narrator before he meets uh, his um, niece. Um, and before he uh, gets to know uh, what happened with her and what the sacrifice or sacrifices that she had um, to uh, offer. After he met her, like I told you, Gaza becomes a totally uh, different thing. Uh, it's um, obviously the meeting or the visit uh, proved very transformational and it, uh, it, it is as, uh, as if it energized him at, um, um, he's, he's uh, totally reformed. He doesn't speak of Gaza in those uh, bad uh, terms uh, anymore. Um, this Gaza uh, will uh, become our uh, Gaza. Um, he's, he's going to be. Uh, he's going to say interesting uh, things about Gaza. He's going to say, for example. Uh, okay, so the people of Gaza uh, become good people. This is what he's saying. This Gaza, this is bit 80, this Gaza in which we had lived and with uh, whose good people we had spent seven years, okay? With whose good people, okay? This is after the visit, of course. So uh, the people of Gaza, um, um, whom they hated uh, before the visit um, are now described as good people. Um, um, okay, he's saying that blazing sun filled the streets with the color of blood and Gaza was brand new. So when he went out of the hospital uh, on the way to his house, uh, Gaza um, seemed new to him. Um, whatever he, uh, ideas, uh, negative ideas he had uh, about Gaza are no longer there. Uh, I imagine that the main street that I walked along on the way back home was only the beginning of a long, long road leading to Safed. So um, that visit um, marks the, uh, like I told, it energized him and of course uh, he decides to stay and not only stay, he, uh, he, um, he is going to um, uh, take on, uh, I mean, roles that he uh, never thought of, uh, which is the idea of uh, fighting and resisting the occupation. He's saying that um, the, um, the street, the main street that he was uh, walking to his house is, uh, is only the beginning of, uh, was only the beginning of a long, long road leading to Safad. Safad, of course, is, um, is um, uh, now uh, part of Israel and he is saying that, uh, okay, it is only uh, from Gaza, from uh, uh, that point forward that we can uh, like liberate suffered and the other uh, occupied uh, territories under um, uh, Israel. Um, and um, his anger and frustration is, um, are taking on uh, new forms. They, they are not anger and frustration anymore. Um, they are uh, um, some kind of challenge. He's saying that everything in this Gaza through with sadness, uh, sadness which was not confined to weaving, so it's not weaving anymore. Uh, it was a challenge, okay? So a challenge, and this is also the impact and the effect of the uh, visit he had uh, to his niece. 
more than that it was something like a reclamation of the amputated leg and even the amputated leg is is um, it can be a symbol of the um, uh, when you have um, I'm, I'm thinking of Palestine according to uh, Ghassan Kanafani as um, um, a human being with all its uh, like um, uh, um, the different um, uh, organs of the body and then uh, the occupying uh, forces uh, uh, come over and they take part of this uh, body so uh, if they take suffered for example at one point uh, it becomes so they uh, it, so uh, it's I mean their body is uh, suffered is amputated from the the rest of the body of the Palestinian if they take um, at one point when when they uh, they they um, they took um, Akka and Yafa, these are also uh, parts of the uh, body of the uh, of Palestine, and they um, it is as if the um, the body of Palestine is dismembered by the uh, occupying uh, forces. And um, um, Ghassan Kanafani here, through his narrator, uh, uh, is um, calling on. Uh, the Palestinians and the other Arabs to like try to uh, reunite so that they can uh, put the uh, the uh, the body uh, the different parts of the body together and uh, give it uh, life. It's uh, also this is also um, um, I mean it can have uh, I mean at least for me echoes of uh, I mean uh, ancient um, um, and classical uh, mythology I mean uh, the uh, myth of uh, Osiris and it's, um, okay so he's saying that uh, it was a challenge more than that it was something like a reclamation of the amputated leg so the amputated, amputated leg uh, is more or less the um, the parts that are amputated I mean the parts of Palestine that are uh, amputated from the uh, the body of Palestine, if, if, you, if this analogy is uh, correct. Uh, uh, Palestine is, uh, at one point it was a whole body and then it, uh, it got um, dismembered by the, uh, by the occupation. Um, what uh, else? Uh, yes, um, this is, um, if we're talking about Gaza, itself um, if you're talking about the uh, the narrator and what can um, um, what what happened um, to him after he has uh, the significance of the visit um, you um, you only have um, to uh, look at how he uh, describes his decision and what 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 he um, he said about it. He said, for example, when uh, this is this this is the opening of the letter. <clears throat> um, so I am um, okay. I've always received news that I have been uh, okay. I have also received news that I have been accepted in the Department of Civil Engineering in the University of California. I must thank you for everything, my friend, but uh, it will strike you as rather odd when I proclaim, was his proclamation, uh, I proclaim this news to you and make no doubt about it. I feel no hesitation. He is very resolute. And this is something that he said after, of course, he visited uh, his uh, niece. Um, I feel no hesitation at all. In fact, I'm pretty well positive that I've never seen things so uh, clearly as uh, I do. And no, my friend, I have changed my mind. I won't follow you to the land where there is greenery, water, and lovely faces. No, I'll stay here and I won't ever leave. Not only that, he's going to ask his uh, friend, to come over and join them and this is uh, what we're going to see when he told him on page 80 
I won't come to you, but you return to us. Come back to learn from Nadia's leg. You see how symbolic the amputated uh, leg has become. Come back, my friend. We are uh, all waiting for you. See? Um, I wanted to highlight also the color symbolism in the short story, and we're going to focus uh, mainly on the color gray because uh, this of course uh, was before the uh, visit um, I mean Gaza was uh, painted um, in gray and like I told you gray is the um, is the color uh, is a symbol a symbol of decay um, end of life um, um, the ashes of uh, fire uh, obviously uh, denoting destruction and stuff and um, in terms of um, decision making if you think of uh, people uh, when you uh, when you uh, and I like this um, this um, association between uh, gray and decision making when when people say for example uh, you have um, Things are either white or black. Okay, if you're um, either white, if you're um, here or there, this is very, I mean, you're decisive. But these are decisive colors, as it were, okay? But if you're in the gray area of things, it means that you're not resolute, you lack uh, clarity of vision, you don't have a uh, mission, you um, you cannot um, uh, you you don't have uh, you're not very uh, like I told you decisive and resolute you you lack the um, insights and you lack uh, the vision necessary to move forward and this this is uh, typically what the narrator felt uh, before of course the visit uh, to uh, his niece. Um, this is what. Uh, like I told you, this is what uh, he felt uh, before uh, he went uh, to her. Um, he uh, still remember. Um, I think this is quite akin to what we're saying. He used to, uh, be before, uh, before meeting uh, with his uh, niece, um, he was, um, he lacked, the vision, um, um, he was, uh, nothing was clear for him, his, uh, he describes his future as being dark, he, uh, he uh, compares from himself to an oyster, um, and uh, the fact that he uh, lives in oppressive loneliness, uh, these are all indications that he was, um, that, um, I mean, he, uh, he was like uh, living uh, for himself. When you live for yourself, when you do not think beyond yourself, when you, would want, when you don't have like values to stand up for, when you don't have a cause, you, you, you feel lost, you feel alienated. But it is only when he started to think of something uh, beyond uh, and over him, which is the... Uh, uh, sacrificing for the freedom and liberation of his, uh, Palestine, it is only then that uh, I mean, his uh, he um, he starts to have uh, I mean clear uh, I mean clarity and clear visions uh, by the future. It doesn't have to be very promising, but at least he he is uh, he starts to have something an ideal to live up to and for. And this is also the lesson that he learned from the sacrifice of his uh, niece, uh, Nadia. Um, again, I would like to um, refer to Nadia, um, which is, uh, Nadia is obviously teaching not only the narrator, uh, but uh, all of us. Uh, a lot of lessons, and one of these, 
which is uh, I think this is meant by Alassane Kanagan. But Alassane Kanagan, by the way, had such faith in children. He believed, uh, he reminds me of William Blake, the great romantic uh, poet uh, who also used to believe that children are innocent uh, and wise, but, but wise, okay? So it is only through the wisdom of Nadia and the, the wise decision that he has taken to sacrifice uh, herself for the sake of her uh, family. Uh, uh, this can uh, indicate uh, this. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm linking this to um, to Hassan um, Kanafani's appreciation of children and how important. They are um, obviously they are they are the promise and hope that they are uh, the future. Uh, he is describing Nadia uh, and the uh, children as um, having something of saintliness. He compares them to uh, saints, and he is also saying that uh, she has the face of a tortured prophet. Okay, and uh, this idea of uh, of, uh, of uh, prophets is also a romantic uh, idea. The fact that the um, romantics used to also think of uh, um, not all of people they they they, uh, they used to think of um, of poets like themselves, human beings, as um, wise. So um, again. Um, it is meant by Hassan Kenafan um, to have a 13 year old child, girl, as um, um, the one who gives hope to the other uh, people around, uh, obviously adults, all of them. Okay, it's this um, insistence upon the part of Kenafani on, on um, on, on hope, obviously, uh, like I told you, when, when we say children, we, uh, we think of hope and promise. Um, okay. um, what else about this short story? Yeah, uh, before we leave uh, this part, I would like to, um, to start um, from this um, session. Uh, uh, on, uh, I would like to start to have like some um, threads, uh, threads um, in the sense that we're going to start a theme in one short story and try to like track it in other short stories. And one of the interesting themes that we can uh, have here, and we we're going to like uh, keep and expand upon in other short stories, is the theme of the treat the treatment of children. How um, children are treated um, and portrayed in the different short stories. So you have the character of Nadia and the sacrifices that she has uh, made and how transformational um, 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 her transformation, uh, her uh, sacrifices, um, sacrifice is. And then we are going to, um, to, um, to trace uh, the treatment of children in other short stories. We still have, um, I mean, I'm talking about the short stories where we have children. Uh, we still have um, uh, Arabic, um, and we also have the Scarlet Ibis, where um, obviously the doodle, the child, uh, plays uh, a major role. We also have the uh, we may need to also go to Jack and the Beanstalk. Uh, some people may say that he is not totally a child, but he is uh, he's not that old. We can uh, like uh, put him in this category and we can see uh, what kind of uh, actions and reactions he uh, has. I want you to think of this. As we explore the different short stories, I would like to, uh, to think of how uh, children are portrayed uh, and treated in these uh, different uh, short stories. Um, I think with this um, uh, item, we have almost um, 
covered everything uh, and all the aspects of this short story. Um, um, uh, on this note, we come to the end of uh, session three um, on the um, uh, short story element of plot. And starting from next time, inshallah, we're going to talk about, we're going to address the short story element of character.